So I guess we can move into the exact requirements or we'll kind of do a general overview of the exact of the requirements, not get too far into the weeds. But Scott, could you start us off with the overview of the 17 controls? I want to look at this diagram. Uh, and this is a way to look at the 17 practices. It, this diagram is intended to show that there is information being protected. That's the, the arrows that go around. And the, it's being protected in four different ways. So it's being protected on your network, you, you would expect, right? The network that you're accessing or saving information on, in this case, FCI. So imagine you get an email with the contract information or, and it, now you got to save it somewhere. It's in a folder, probably on your network. And, and it's being, it's been transmitted through your network connections wirelessly or wired, um, or in the cloud. And so that network needs to be protected. And there are specific requirements for your network. Some of the 17 are related to the network. Secondly, there are some requirements related to people because people are, are the ones who are reading the information. They're the ones creating the, the, the documentation, perhaps. They're the ones who are, are uh, uh, organizing or replying to information that's being requested. Uh, so, And the way in which people handle that information is important. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, mm -hmm. endpoints. Endpoint is a term that refers to the devices that are connected to the network that are at the end. <laughs> at the end point. Uh, so like your laptop, I'm on a laptop here today, uh, your phone, if you were to look something up on your phone, there's my phone. Um, if, if you had a tablet, if you have a desktop computer, I generally say if, so, if it has a screen and a keyboard, it's probably an endpoint. That's not scientifically true, but generally. So those devices that we all handle and view information on are need to be protected. And then fourthly, there are requirements for the facility, for the work environment that, that that your computers are in and that your people are in. So those four areas uh, have, there are requirements for each, and we're going to dive into those. So, so Rick, let's dive into that first one, and I'm going to quiz you. <laughs> <laughs> sure. With the expert here. Uh, so let's talk about the network. So, Rick, what are some of the controls or practices related to the network. Can you just kind of touch on the those, get people familiar with some of the technical issues and, and terminology? Here? Sure, sure. So I, I think one of the biggest things is access, controlling your access um, to this uh, FCI. It would be like um, a username and passwords. Um, it would be only those authorized individuals that have a need to see that would have access. So not only users, but we're talking about devices that might interact with it, uh, controlling what uh, those devices might be. Um, it's talking about monitoring, monitoring your network, um, making sure that you're looking for any suspicious activities that are happening across your network. Uh, so constantly keeping uh, an eye on that, um, making sure that things like your antivirus are up to date. Um, and that it's active um, as you move forward. So those are some ways that you can protect your, your network uh, where this information resides. The biggest thing is um, segregating the access to it, making sure that only those individuals um, that need access to that ha can have access to it. Uh, a good uh, thing to do would be a multi-factor authentication um, beyond the username and password. Uh, helps to secure that a little bit more. Yeah, great, great uh, run through, Rick. Um, these are these network protections are generally technology related. Mm -hmm. uh, they require technical expertise. Um, often, it, your IT person or MSP could implement and these particular controls on your network. Um, it, the, the thing to be aware of is that they have to be done properly. They have to be done in a way 
that can be audited. Um, uh, and they will be uh, scrutinized um, uh, for certification. Um, so there are these are technical things on your network. So now let's go to the second area, the people protection. Rick, what are some things that we have to be preparing with regard to people who access and use the information? I think one of the biggest things um, is to uh, train the individuals mm -hmm. um, on you know their responsibility, their role, um, understanding how they need to protect that. There's policies that would that would be in place um, that they would need to understand the policies. So just overall good training, cyber uh, training for employees, so they can recognize um, once again the importance of um, um, being careful. Uh, as yeah. they access this information and who they can share that information with and who they can't share the information with. Um, all that is is very important. So being aware of your surroundings, mm -hmm. um, you know, if there's guests in the facility, um, you want to be cognizant of what you're putting on your screen and all that's part of the training and the awareness uh, that you have information that you just don't want everybody uh, to see. Uh, so that's a biggest uh, that that's a big liability there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And in order to make this security process work, you have to not only consider technical things, but you got to consider the users, the people. Uh -huh. uh, and 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 Rick, it's not just the the things on a screen. It could be things on a desk or or on on uh, out in the production environment on paper. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you, you you have to be aware that this information could be in different formats, and uh, uh, that's where the training comes in to play. Yep. That anybody who has access to information, uh, uh, who's who's say it this way, who's permitted to access information, mm -hmm. needs mm -hmm. to be properly trained and understand the rules, and then follow the rules. Uh, yep. So. The, the training will be part of the assessment. You know, there's part of the assessment is you have to have records of the training and it has to be documented and there has to be policies and, and things mm -hmm. like things like that. So uh, it's not just that, hey, we, we met in the conference room and we made an announcement and now we're trained. Mm -hmm. uh, you'll have to have more in-depth training uh, evidence mm -hmm. to, to show compliance for, mm -hmm. for CMMC. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right, so that brings us then to to the third uh, bucket, which is endpoint protection. Now we're back to the technical, so we're bouncing mm -hmm. between the the technical side and the people side. So we're on the technical side again, specifically, Rick, with regard to the devices we all use to access and and view uh, the information. What do we have to think about with regard to endpoints? Yeah, so what would be in scope there would be things like we've mentioned before, um, your laptops, any kind of uh, computers uh, would be within scope here. Um, it could be any, basically any device that is connected to your network uh, that would interact with this uh, FCI uh, would be in, in, in scope here. It could be, you know, your routers and your switches and your printers and you know, uh, kind of going back a little bit with the, the people thing, um, if I print something out, th make sure you go to the printer and, and get it. Don't just leave it lay there. So that's how that device is within uh, scope here. So um, any of the, the, the tools or technical uh, equipment that you might have would be what it's talking about the endpoint here. Could be servers and what, as well. Yeah, what, what kind of uh, requirements then applied to those devices? I mean, how do those need to be secured? So how you protect those is, number one, you want to make sure that uh, they have the latest patches on those. Um, once again, that you are uh, reviewing the audit logs. Uh, for example, servers produce um, audit logs. And so you want to make sure that only the proper devices were accessing a server or um, you want to be monitoring computers or laptops or cell phones or whatever um, the device is that you're interacting to make sure uh, that people aren't trying to get in, in inappropriately, that, you know, they're hacking, trying to hack a password or username. Uh, so there's a whole um, monitoring those devices, the communication that's happening there 
on your network. You want to be monitoring that uh, between devices uh, and so forth. That can give you a, a lot of clues there. Yeah, yeah, good, good, uh, good summary there, Rick. Um, on endpoints, I think another piece is an endpoint device could, when it uh, needs to be replaced mm. or disposed of, uh, there you have to be aware of the information still on the laptop. It's still on the thumb drive. Mm. Uh, what do we have to think about when something reaches end of life? Yeah, end of life, you want to make sure you sanitize them. Um, and there's a lot of different ways to sanitize um, devices, i.e. thumb drives, hard drives. Uh, definitely, um, there's techniques out there that are used uh, for hard drives. Anything from uh, just deleting all the information, taking a strong magnet over it, um, you know, some more secure things. Uh, fill the hard drive up with ones and zeros. It just depends to what extent. But th the key here is uh, to make sure that that information that was on that uh, thumb drive or hard drive uh, is not retrievable. If it is hard copies, that's another thing to think about. Um, if I have a printed copy, uh, you might want to shred that. Um, you don't want to just fold it up, throw it in your waste can, goes out the door and... Uh, People do dumpster diving and try to find information that That's way. Right. So you, yeah. you want to make sure that, you know, while we're, we're talking here about these um, equipment, uh, you also have hard copies of this stuff that may or may not be uh, utilized within your organization. And you have to yeah. make sure that's destroyed properly as well. Mm -hmm. Well, the other thing is, Rick, you're alluding to the fact that there are different ways to handle these different things. Mm -hmm. So there's no one size fits all. Correct. There's no one way to do it. And whatever approach uh, or, or process you, you, you decide upon then needs to be documented in written policies uh, so that you can train everybody and, and hold everybody accountable mm -hmm. to, the, to, to these restricted uh, methods. Uh, so it's, there's kind of a sequence there of understanding what's needed choosing the right approach, writing the policies, implementing those policies and training the people uh, as well. And, the, and then the fourth area is, is facilities. A couple of things to keep in mind with regard to protecting the facility. Rick, go ahead and comment on those. Yeah, so facilities, um, securing your facility is really critical. Um, making sure that you have locked doors, maybe it's a keypad, maybe it's a key card, uh, finger scans, whatever it might be, so that you're controlling um, who has access to your facility. Um, and then beyond that, um, having some kind of a login process, um, a ledger where individuals that are coming in as a guest, uh, or even to work on your equipment, um, where they have to log in and you keep track of that. And then when they leave your facility, uh, you want to keep track of that as well. Um, so people coming in and leaving, um, and keeping a log of that, because once again, you want to review that or audit that from time to time to make sure that people are doing the right things uh, so that you know who has access to your facility, um, in case there's an issue that comes up, um, you you know who's been there, and uh, so you can really do some investigation if needed. Uh, but yeah. once again, very important to secure your facility and maybe restrict areas. Um, always um, have uh, an escort. You should have an escort policy as part of that, uh, that you just don't want somebody off the street roaming around. Um, for manufacturing, sometimes that can be a, a challenge um, if you have a shipping area that's wide open. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it will be to educate uh, your employees. That goes back to the training. You see somebody coming in. Hey, have you logged in? You know, uh, might be a pain to do that. But once again, by educating your employees, the importance of that uh, will help them, you know, uh, support the policies that you put in place uh, for that. Thank you for watching this video to the end. This is part of a longer series on DFARS, NIST, and CMMC compliance produced by Core Business Solutions. 
please subscribe to this channel, like this video with a thumbs up, and click the bell to get notified when we drop a new video. Also, we'd appreciate it if you would share this video with your colleagues who need to stay up to speed on DFARS, NIST, and CMMC. Thank you, and we'll see you again in the next video.